friends I'm here to share with you guys today two quick easy ways to make Valentine's Day super fun for your kids but super low stress and low prep for you one idea I'm gonna share with you guys right now and then the second idea I will have to pick you guys back up after school and share with you that one because my students haven't made that thing yet so I don't have anything to share yet um, and I want to be able to show you guys an example so in my district we get three days a year where we can have some kind of party with our students um, not all day but usually just like the last hour of the day so in my grade level we do one the day before winter break we do one on Valentine's Day and then we do one at the last day of school so in years past I have used signup.com or signup genius some kind of like sign up system where parents can pick what they want to bring um, parents have brought things like fruit and veggie trays chips maybe like a cookies um, someone donates napkins um, Capri Suns things like that but that requires me to have to go in and set up the sign up then I have to share it out then I have to wait for parents to sign up for it then I have to make sure that they brought it and it just kind of is a lot of extra work for me and then day of the kids all have to line up with their plates pick what they want there's usually a mess on the floor or definitely on the table that we set it up at um, then there's always food left over and it just kind of feels like all this extra work there's extra food and and it just kind of takes a lot of time. So last year for our day before winter break party, I tried this activity and it was seamless. I'm gonna turn you guys around and show you guys what it is now, but it is so much easier than the activity that I just explained to you guys that I used to do where I have people sign up for stuff. This takes all the pressure off, all the stress off. It takes everything off of you and it's so much easier. So I'm gonna turn you guys around and show you guys what I'm talking about. Okay, so. This is called Valentine's Day Party in a Bag, and the creator of this on TPT also has ones for like um, Christmas, end of school year, and I think a couple other ones. I can't even remember right now, but there's different versions of this, so if you wanted to use this at like the end of the year, you don't have to use one that says Valentine's Day. And all you do is staple it to a brown paper lunch bag, and then it says have your child decorate the bag and print their name on the bottom of the bag. It's really important that they do it on this like bottom trunk so that no one knows whose it is. Um, they don't need to know who created which bag or who brought what bag, but I do need to know whose is whose so that they don't end up with their own. Um, do, 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 do. Yeah, it says that way I know whose bag is whose and I can make sure a child does not get their own bag. Um, your child will not be eating their own bag. We'll be playing a game to switch the bags around. So usually I'll read some kind of poem or book or something that has to do with whatever the kind of day is. And I'll try to see in that book if there's a word that's repeated. Like if we're doing Valentine's Day, we might read a book about kindness or friendship or love or something like that. And every time they hear that word, they have to pass the bag either to the right or to the left, whichever way we decide beforehand. Um, but everyone's passing it the same way. And then this is the list of items that are supposed to go in the bag. So it says a juice box or Kool-Aid jam or some kind of juice, um, a small bag of chips or pretzels, popcorn, something like that. Um, a chocolate item, a candy item, and a non-candy Valentine's Day item could be stickers, pencil, some little toy from the Dollar Tree, something really cheap and inexpensive. And then I'm going to give this to the kids this morning and have them write in the day that I want it brought back. I want it back the day before Valentine's Day, but if I write it in there, then I might not get them all back on that day because they're not paying attention to when it's due. So I'm going to go over this with them, get them excited about it, and then have them write in the date. Now, if you work in a district where the kids wouldn't be able to bring the bags back, then this probably isn't going to work for you. And I totally understand that this is not the kind of activity that can work everywhere. I'll always pack a couple extra bags just in case there's a kid who can't bring it or who forgets or whose parents aren't able to. I definitely don't want to put any stress or pressure on the parents that they have to buy something. So um, I am more than happy to do this so that every child can participate. So when it's time to do it, we all sit in a big circle. I'll read whatever the poem or story is and they'll pass the bag around. And then when the story's over, which bag that they have still that's the bag they get so then they open it up it's kind of like Christmas because they get to see what's in the bag and they get excited it's like a mystery to them so um, if they get something that they don't like I tell them they can trade with someone if someone's willing but even if you get something that you don't like we always want to not say that out loud and not be like oh I don't like this because someone brought that and someone brought it to try to bring you something that they thought you would like so we don't want to be disrespectful and hurt someone's feelings by being negative about the thing that they brought um, so we do have that conversation before they they even get their bags and before we start playing the game but it's just an easy fun low stress low prep way for you guys to have some kind of party the kids get to eat something they get to play a game it's fun it's a surprise but you don't have to do the work of setting it up throwing away the food afterwards having this big old mess so to me it's just a lot easier so um, that is the first activity that I have for you guys I'm gonna link down below that um, the paper that I stapled to the bag that has like all the directions on it and I will pick you guys back up after school and show you the other activity that I have for Valentine's Day after my kids make them so I'll see you soon 
Hey guys, it is after school now and I'm gonna be sharing with you guys that second idea which is Love Monster Bags. So if you haven't seen this on Instagram yet, this is a product that I created, it's on TPT and I'll have it linked down below. It is so freaking cute and so fun. Every year it's like one of my favorite, favorite, favorite things in the whole world. So I'm going to show you guys what they look like. I was waiting after school because I wanted to show you all the kids finished. I usually have them taped up on the whiteboard up here. Obviously that didn't happen. We ran out of time today. We've had a crazy day. So we are gonna finish them on Monday. You can actually see all the kids are like hanging off their desk. So we're just gonna finish that first thing Monday morning so that they have their bags for Valentine's Day. So this is something that I do for a couple different reasons. One, it's a really awesome way to build classroom community because students are writing each other kind notes and they are taking their time to be specific about those things so that their classmates can feel good about themselves and they can build each other up and uplift one another. It is also a way that the kids will take their Valentines home. So they can pass out their Valentines to each other on Thursday because we don't have school on Valentine's Day this year. We have a PD day for staff and it has handles so they can take um, their Valentines, pass them out, and then we have our little Valentine's Day party and then they can take the whole thing home. So I'm gonna flip you guys around and show you what they look like. Okay, so this is my example. I always make one too because I want the kids to be able to pass out notes to me and I wanna get the kindness notes. <laughs> so um, these white bags are just like plain white bags with handles from the Dollar Tree. They come two for a dollar, which is a little bit expensive, but every year I always forget to order them on Amazon ahead of time. So I do believe that there are options on Amazon that are way cheaper, but if you are a little bit behind the curve and you wanna have them for this next week, you can just run to the dollar store. And then like I mentioned, the template for all the little hearts came from my TPT store. So if you buy the product that I have linked down below, you don't need to create anything or like hand draw anything. It'll have a template for each student. And I'll show you in a second what that looks like. Let me actually put you down and print one out for you guys so I can show you because it'll be a lot easier to explain the trading of colors if you can see what I'm talking about. So hold on one second. Okay, so these are the templates and I just print them on all different random colors. You can see as we kind of sweep across the room that there are all the different colors of the rainbow that are on the different bags. So what I do is I just print all the different colors. I let the kids pick which body they want, which big heart, which is gonna be that one. <laughs> they can pick whichever color they want for that one because there's only one. But then for all of the different um, legs, arms, and antennas, as well as all of the little eyes, pupils, hands, all those things, I just pass them out randomly because they can trade. So we do this all together because it would be kind of crazy if we didn't and I feel like they would not know what to do. So I have them cut out their body first and then set that aside. And then what I have them do is take this sheet and they cut here. I do it on the document camera and then they do it one step at a time. So we cut off the eyes and then before we do anything else, I have them hold up their eyes in the air if they want to trade with a partner because they want a different color. And I try to make sure that when I'm passing these two out that they get a different color of the hearts than they do the big heart because like for example, if they're gonna cut out the eyes and put them on here, we don't want them to be the same color because then they won't be able to see them at all. So we wanna make sure that they have different colors to go with. So if they wanna trade eyes with someone, they can trade eyes. They hold them up, I give them 10 seconds and then I start counting down. By the time I get to zero, they better be back in their seat. Then we do the pupils next, so I have them cut here. Same thing, hold it up in the air if they wanna trade colors. If they don't wanna trade colors, then they just stay where they are and then everyone knows not to go ask them to trade colors. And then I also tell them too, if nobody wants to trade colors with you because they don't like the color you have or they don't want it or whatever, you get what you get, you don't throw a fit. This is supposed to be a fun thing and at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter what color it is, so don't ruin it by getting upset, basically. So we do the pupils, then we do the corner of the smile, so we just cut, this will be cut off, so we just cut here and here. And then same thing, they can trade colors if they want to. And then all they have left are these medium-sized hearts, so I have them cut this part off and then right here, and then take all three sets. I tell them they can't trade each individual heart, but they can trade sets. So like these will be the hands, ears, and then feet. Um, if they don't want the same color feet, they can just swap once they cut them all out so that they can have like, if this is red and then this set that they swap for is blue, then they can have like one hand that's blue and one hand that's um, red but we're not gonna cut them each individually because then they would lose them and it would be crazy and even some kids lost them just like this. So <laughs> make it as easy as possible on yourself. So then from there, once they've traded and they have all their colors, then I have them start with their eyes. So I give them one minute, I cut them out with them and then we glue them down onto the big heart. 
then the pupils, then the corner of the smile. I draw them on with a Sharpie. So I give each kid a Sharpie, show them how to draw their little smile, and then they glue down the little corner of the smile. And from there, then we glue this big heart onto the bag. So that way, that part is taken care of. We have all the little pieces, and then we just have to worry about the little crinkle paper, and then the hands, ears, and feet. So then next, I have them cut out all of their strips on the line. And then for this one, I let them stand up if they want to trade colors. They can have them all the same, like mine are all the same. But if they don't want them the same, they don't have to. And I give them one minute to trade with whoever they want to so that they can have different colored arms and legs and whatever. And then from there, I show them how to crinkle it. So fold it one way and then fold it backwards the other way until it's all gone. And then um, we didn't have time today to put on all of them. I think we just did, yeah, I can see... We just did the legs and the arms, and then after school, I just did the antenna so I could show you guys the finished example. Um, and then you just glue them onto the end so that they look like little hands. And then I always tell them to, I don't know if you're going to be able to tell on this one. See how there's like the black line from cutting it out? I always tell them to put that on the back side so that it looks nice and clean from the other side, and you can't tell if you made a mistake. So then once the bags are all hung on the board, I will give the kids each a little Ziploc baggie with one index card for every student as well as a class list. And then randomly throughout the week, I'll just say, okay, we're gonna write two kindness notes, pick someone from the list that you haven't written to yet, and they know which ones they have or haven't because they'll highlight or cross it off when they're done writing to that person. Um, and yes, everyone has to write one to every person. And we do have a talk beforehand about uh, making sure that we're writing only kind things. We wanna use this opportunity to lift up our classmates, make them feel special, and nobody wants to be the one that gets a mean note and so we don't want to be the one to make anyone feel like that either so treat others the way you want to be treated don't write anything rude and they'll just be able to take their note after they write it and then just go stick it in that person's bag and then like I said on Thursday because we don't have school Friday I'll just peel the bags off the um, whiteboard and then give them to the kids they'll just set them pretty much just like this actually on their desk so that they're kind of the legs are hanging off and you can see their name oh that's one thing that I forgot to say I always have them write their name in sharpie at the bottom so that when it's hanging on the board they know whose is whose and then um, we take them down, they put them on their desk, they pass out all their little valentines if they wanted to bring valentines. And then um, from there they can grab their bags, sit on the floor somewhere, and then dump it out. And then they have like their candy, their valentines, they can eat two pieces of candy, and then they can read all their notes. And every year it is the sweetest thing because they will go over, some of them will get a little bit emotional and they'll go over to the person that wrote the note to them and give them a hug or say thank you or tell them how much it meant to them. And it's the sweetest thing it's so cute and it's an awesome way to build up that family environment again showing them that we're all in this together we want to treat each other like family we want to be kind to each other we want to make each other feel good about ourselves and this is a really fun opportunity to do that especially on a day that you're already going to be having some kind of party or some kind of fun activity going on so why not use it as an opportunity to build that classroom culture so those are the two things that we are going to be doing on valentine's day that are like valentine's day related and if you guys have any other suggestions for for fun things for Valentine's Day, definitely leave them down below in the comments so that I can steal them and that other people can get ideas also. And I hope you guys have a wonderful Valentine's Day. If you are like me and you have the week after Valentine's Day off, we are almost there, hang in there. One more week, we got this. And I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you for watching and I will see you guys soon for another video. Bye.